Hi, welcome to today's new quick tip. Uh, today we're going to be talking about lens distortion pipelines using STMAP. So let's go ahead and start. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and analyze the footage. Usually when you're on set, uh, they will have a slate and that slate will have the lens that was used, the f-stop and the type of lens with the ISO and a couple of other information that you might need uh, for your shot. It's extremely important that we do the lens distortion before, or the in this case, the understore, before we actually track the footage so we could get a more accurate result. So we're going to go ahead and look at the lens distortion chart that was shot on set. In this case, we have this type of lens distortion. We're going to find a frame that is kind of leveled. In this case, that frame is pretty leveled. And the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to create a lens distortion node. And that lens distortion, the next stage will be to go to grid analysis and we're going to analyze the checkboard pattern. Um, the only thing that you have to do is make sure it's a check button, analyze grid, and there you go. You can set the overlay so you can see exactly what happened. And if we disable it, you can see the before and after. What we're going to do is we're going to export this out as an image file that will be a displacement file, which will allow us to distribute this across uh, all our compositors for wh whoever's working on this 50 millimeter lens. And it will be a lot faster, a lot quicker. Um, and that way they don't run the risk of actually changing any value on the lens distortion uh, node or anything like that. It will be kind of a little bit more efficient. So in order to do this, the lens distortion, we're going to go in and change the output type to, uh, to displacement and check it. It will be on the motion channel. So there you go. And what we need to do is we need to set this to back to the RGB so we could actually render as an image. Uh, you can keep it on the channel if you're rendering EXR. You can keep it on the motion channel and then copy that back into uh, your stream. But in this case, we can just kind of set it up into the RGB. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a shuffle node after um, the lens distortion. And I'm going to change this to motion. That way it's going to pipe my motion data into the red, green, and blue. That way now I could go back into my uh, right node in this case. And I'm going to go ahead and just go through my assets list and save it in a place that you can find it. In this case, I have it on my lens distortion chart. And in there, I'm going to go ahead and save it. I already have one there, so let's go ahead and replace it. Hit save. And um, the next thing is make sure the color space is linear. It's an EXR file. Data type is going to be 32-bit float. And we're going to keep it at one zip scan line. And then go ahead and render. And here we go. So I'm going to go ahead and read it back in. And essentially it's going to look like this. They should look both exactly the same. So if you look at the one before and the one after, there should be no difference between the two. All right. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and create a new ST map node. And the ST map node will come with an ST map input and a source input. So what you're going to do is your footage that you plan to understore, you want to connect it to a source. And then the ST map, that is the new displacement uh, for the lens distortion, we're going to connect it to the ST map. Then double click on your ST map and you're going to change your UV channels that is from none to RGB. So that way it's going to read the RGB data from it. And the next thing that we do is we check it. So we look at the ST map and see if the distortion is doing it correctly. And it looks like it's doing it. Let's go to a frame that we could see the straights in here and kind of gauge it a little bit better. And there we go. So we do have the displacement map working. So the last but not least is before we actually go in and track this footage, instead of having this here, we like to render the footage out as an undistorted plate. And we tend to put the UD at the end for undistorted. So we go ahead and put a right node after the ST map, render out undistorted plate. That way we could use it in Maya or any of the other applications that we want. And uh, we could put the CG and do all the CG work correctly. Um, and then after that, we will be ready for the camera tracker. So this has been a quick tip for Nuke uh, Lens Distortion Pipeline, and I hope you guys enjoy it, enjoy it, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.